Today I'm doing a rework. It's a um, heating element rework kit. It's a uh, recall by Sub-Zero Cove. It's actually a Cove dishwasher that's put out by Sub-Zero Wolf. Um, this is the dishwasher here. It's got a cabinet panel on it. It's a panel ready door and I'm going to start this uh, recall repair by taking the bottom rack out. Once this bottom rack comes out it rolls right out. You lift it up. Set it down. Then we've got the uh, wash arm. You turn counterclockwise, which I've already done, and you lift it straight out. Set this off to the side. The filter basket turns counterclockwise and lifts right up out. There are two screws um, down in here. I've already taken them out. Um, they were uh, cross point or Phillips head screws. There was one right there and one on the opposite side. Um, if you go to Sub-Zero's website, it shows them as being quarter, quarter inch hex um, that you would use a nut driver on. I recommend using something magnetic so that when you unscrew it, you can lift the screw right out of there because it is tucked down inside here. So now that the screws are out, you're going to lift the door up and basically you would two, use two hands, but I am filming this, so I'm going to pull up and then the door comes off. It just lifts right up off of there. There are keyholes right there. There's four of them, two at the top and two down at the bottom that these pins fit into on the back of the door panel. It's a pretty easy um, uninstall or install. The new rework kit per the recall comes with a new heating element. The difference I see with the heating element um, also as described on their website is they're using stainless steel washers here instead of the brass that are on the old element. This house actually had two of the dishwashers and I've already done one of the recalls. Um, this is brass on the old element and the new one is stainless steel. And it also comes with your um, thermal cutout, the TCO. It's on a bracket and um, it's all ready to go. It's pretty much plug and play. And it comes with the lock nuts, a new wiring diagram, and a set of instructions. I am going to proceed with this recall repair and we'll go to what's next. The first thing I'm going to do now um, before I start tackling this thing is I'm going to take this wiring diagram right off of here just so I don't forget to do this later. I'll take this off. And the new one, you just tear that off and the new wiring diagram has a peel off. Um, it's got this peel off on the back of it and it basically goes right where the old one was. Set that right in there. Um, I guess because of how easy it is to remove this door panel um, they just put it there to keep it out of the way. Next, we'll remove this magnetic kick plate. There's two magnets on there, one on each side. That's very convenient. You just pull it right off. And I've got to tell you, after doing one already, I can tell you that um, I'm really impressed with this cove. Um, usually with a high-end appliance like this that's um, like a new design um, separate from everything else out there on the market it is a new animal and it is definitely what I it's not over engineered um, like some of the other brands and I'm not going to mention any other names but this is definitely for me as a technician um, so far what I've experienced is that it's not over engineered and that's a plus anyhow we will take uh, this quarter inch driver here and remove two screws there's one on each side here that's for that side and this one's on the other side somebody's already had these off I can tell by uh, looking at them they um, actually had this machine uninstalled and um, put a loaner machine while they were waiting for these parts to come in so they may have taken some of these screws out but anyway 
you take those two screws out and this bottom kick plate pull, leans forward, pulls right up out of here. We'll set this off to the side. All right, now the top kick plate, that's the upper half, has two screws. We're gonna take that one out. There's one on the other side. All right, we got those. There is a wiring harness right here, and it's pretty simple the way they have this, actually. You pull that forward at the bottom, and then this there's a clip. It just clips right up out of that notch right there. Very, very convenient, easy. Again, they had the technician in mind when they designed this machine. Other machines I've seen, um, they definitely don't keep the technician in mind when it comes to doing repairs. Again, this is your turbidity sensor. I never pronounced that right, but I think I might have got it that time. This uh, wiring harness is going to come off of here. Let me just, uh, it's kind of hard to film this with my phone. One of these days I'll get a GoPro. Anyway, that comes right off. You just carefully lift up this tab and pull this wire forward. You don't want to break that tab. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take these two screws out. This is a T20 Torx bit. We're going to pull this little hold down bracket off because the new... TCO sensor your thermal cutout has a bracket on it that's going to fit over it in place of it Stand by All right, I got the screws out. I'm just going to take carefully take this off. This is the hold down bracket for that sensor Set that off to the side Now what you want to do first thing you want to do right out of the gate Which I skipped over this step is make sure the machine is unplugged and that you have no voltage at all in the machine um, these are the hold down nuts for the heating element. You're going to loosen these up. On the other machine, I actually had to put a, a small wrench on there to, to break this free, and then they come off by hand. You just take these off here. Okay. All right. They come off, and they slide down the wire so that you can get in here and disconnect the wires from the heating element. one this comes off here now on the other um, machine this wire here is uh, the red and blue wire now this is the one that according to your instructions comes off of this okay this is the one that ends up going to your TCO sensor on that other machine they were actually backwards so Follow the instructions. Use the blue and red because that's what they're asking you to do. They want they want the wire coming off of the sensor right here. This sensor that's going to go on here like this. They want this blue wire to go to this leg. And they want this blue and red wire to go to the other terminal on the TCO. So if you open up a machine and it's backwards the way the other one was with the orange wire on here, I would switch them and put the orange wire on this terminal where it belongs and then go ahead and connect the blue and red wire to the TCO that's what's recommended um, they have their reasons I would imagine um, stand by now that I've got both wires disconnected from my heating element I've got they're calling it orange I guess it's orange anyway that one's tucked off to the side I've already tagged the new one um, onto the TCO. You got the blue and red wire on one side and the blue wire that comes with it on the other. This, like I said, is gonna mount over here with those Torx bits. But now the next step is to take that element out of the way. And that's what we'll do. We got the nuts off, the wires off. Now you just open the door back up. And this element should lift out of here without too much grief. Comes right out. Make sure the surface is dry. And so, depending on if the customers are using this all the way up to the repair, this sump may be full of water. You may need to vacuum it out. In this case, um, I did not have to do that. The water is below the level of the mounting surface of the element. So I got lucky and didn't need to drag a vac up here. So now with the element out of the way and the legs out of the way that, are, that would normally come through the bottom, I'm going to take advantage of having some open space there to get my hands in there and put the mounting bracket on. Stand by. Okay, so 
I've got that bracket screwed on there with those T20s. I took everything apart with my uh, screw gun, um, but I don't recommend ever putting this kind of stuff back together with one. I used a handheld Torx bit to tighten those screws down. They are going into a plastic housing and you don't want to strip them out. Um, this bracket fits perfectly over the square uh, connector uh, for your sensor. And now you're going to plug the sensor back in. It just pushes in nicely and the little tab clips down right over it. So now you've got your two wires hooked up to your TCO. The only wire left now is um, the blue one. It's a blue wire that comes with it that's hanging off of it. And then you got your orange wire. There's two wires. And when we put the new element in, we're going to connect them. And we're almost done with this thing. Um, there's a few things we're going to check with the meter. And um, then we'll be ready to rock and roll and get the rest of it back together. Stand by. Now you'll see that the new locking, the uh, element hold down nuts, these lock down nuts are shorter than the, the original ones. Um, they, this way the uh, terminal sticks out the bottom and you're able to get the wire on without having to slide that long uh, nut down, that long plastic retaining nut down um, on the wire to get it plugged in and unplugged. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. We're gonna start by putting those on finger tight. One thing I do want to tell you is that these, um, the threads on these are, it's a very coarse thread. So those plastic nuts, they kind of, they'll wobble around a little bit on you when you're starting to thread them on. So just be careful. I mean, if it starts to bind up on you, back it off and uh, start all over again. There is thread locker on the new element, which also presents a problem. Because It's not really a problem. It's just, you just really need to pay attention um, to how you're threading them on because the thread locker could make you think that you're cross threading them when you're not so thread them on with a slight firmness yet make sure they're going on straight because you don't want to cross thread them when you're putting them on you want them to seal and butt all the way up um, against the bottom of the uh, tub but anyway these are the nuts on here and I started threading them on it's just hard to do a lot of this with the phone in my hand that one's going on nice once I got it started, you're going to thread them all the way up by hand as far as you can. That's about as far as I can go with that one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten them down. They, they recommend um, you, you can use a tor an inch pound torque wrench and you want to go about 15 inch pounds. Um, pretty much when you've done this for a while and you know what the final outcome needs to look like you, you really don't need to use a uh, torque wrench but I will show you uh, what we're looking for here when you open this up you can see the uh, the gaskets underneath these stainless steel rings um, need to kind of be flattened out a little bit you need to see them like the stainless steel ring needs to squash down and have that gasket the seal underneath expand outward a bit i can show you what the other machine looks like I, what i'll do is i'll just show you when i'm done with this one how it's supposed to look and i go back and forth and snug it down and keep looking inside till i know it's where i want it to be and then naturally we check it for leaks when we're done anyhow stand by all right now we can see you can see how these seals are expanded they're like you know the uh these um, stainless steel washers pulled down on them and they expanded outward around the washer. That's how you want it to look, just like that. You don't want to over tighten it and um, cause the edge of the washer to cut through the rubber. You just want to go back and forth and keep an eye on it and have it look like that. And we should not have a problem. Stand by. All right, it's better with the light on this phone. I didn't even realize the light was off for most of this video, but I'm sure you could, you could see it. All right, here's your blue wire. The blue wire is gonna go to the left leg of the element. We got that on there good. The orange wire is gonna go on this side. It's good and tight, it's a good tight fit. Oh, what happened? I'm putting my, uh, sorry about that. All right, so we have the connector in the turbidity sensor. We have our two connectors that are on our TCO, which is our thermal cutout sensor or uh, thermostat. 
and we have the element in and secure. We have the two wires on the element. And uh, that's looking good. Now this is where we get into testing some things out with the meter. Okay. Let me see if I could shrink this down a little bit. Well, anyhow, what you want to do first off is make sure that we have um, continuity uh, between the actual um, TCO thermostat there. We want to have this right here, which is the, the, the surface of this um, thermostat, we want to make sure that it's touching the tub and that I'm going to go to ground down here on the base. You can hear my meter. Um, I'm just touching metal down here. You know, you can touch the bottom of the tub. But anyway, I'm touching the actual thermostat, the bimetal um, mounting section of the thermostat to metal, and uh, we've got continuity. So it's touching as it should be. We also want to make sure that we've got a good closed connection between the two legs, and it is. All right, so now we're gonna go from the red wire around here over to our element, and on the other leg of the element. So we've got continuity throughout. We do not, we also wanna check um, continuity to ground from our terminals to make sure nothing's going to ground. There is a, a screw on the front of this machine. It's not in view of the camera, but um, I'm touching it We've got no continuity to ground on either element leg or anywhere else that we're not supposed to have it. So we're looking good. We're going to start buttoning this thing back up. Stand by. We're going to lock this filter back in place. There we go. By turning clockwise, we'll put the wash arm back in. Turn that clockwise till it locks in place. We can put the bottom rack back in. All right, everything inside is together. We're going to close the door. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug the machine in, make sure it's got water going to it, and we're going to turn it on and check for leaks before we put anything else back together. All right, so now we'll open the door and uh, we'll put this thing on a start. We'll start it up, shut the door, and let it fill up and start doing its thing. And we will check for leaks underneath. This is a well designed machine. I got to tell you, it looks like. You can work on just about everything from underneath this machine. Um, you, there's room to get your hands in there and work. Um, I honestly don't see a single component under this machine that I wouldn't be able to service um, as it sits. Anyhow, we're looking good so far. It's filling up with water. We're looking for leakage around these two right here and so far I see none um, that's the only thing we took off this machine that would allow water to come out is the heating element we didn't disconnect anything else that pertains to water but we're just gonna watch this for a minute I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pause this all right, well, it's now in the wash cycle. It's done filling. It's washing right now. There's been no drop of water anywhere. Everything is dry as it should be. The machine's running like it, it should. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the cycle by opening up the machine. Um, I would just pull the door open just a little bit because it is running right now. We don't want water splashing out. And I'm going to hit cancel. And I'm going to hit shut the door. And it's going to do a cancel drain. I'll make sure nothing on the drain side of the system is leaking. It shouldn't be. I'm going to put the kick plates back on. You want to put the upper one on first. You want to use the top screw. There's a top screw hole on both sides for the upper. Um, you'll see that there's a hole in the bottom of the upper one. But the same screw that holds the bottom kick plate on 
cover goes through that bottom one so you don't want to put them in there you just want to use the top ones first with the top panel stand by with the top panel you want to uh, make sure that you take and put this bracket back through there's a bracket uh, it's not a, it's like a little clip this little clip for this wiring harness is, is going to slide right over this it's it's real easy you put that on and then you put this top plate on take your bottom plate roll it in above the magnets you take the bottom of it and tuck it in behind the magnets and then just lay it forward and it will fall right into place where it goes and then you can put your other two screws in one there and one on the other side stand by when you do put these screws in i rec recommend that you, do, you don't tighten it you just start that screw so that when you come over here to do this other screw it'll find the hole and you can start that one and then tighten them both down if you tighten this one down chances are you're gonna have to loosen it up and slide the plate over there is enough clearance um, you know it, it's kind of it's not sloppy but there's enough movement with this plate to where if you tighten that down and this one's not lined up perfect you'll miss the hole so that's just uh, just a tip to save you some time now I can put the magnetic kick plate on which is right over here there's the magnets right there and right there and this kick plate just goes in place you can set it and adjust it however however you want it but uh, it's on the machine and now I'm ready to put the door on you've got those keys at the bottom and then there's keys at the top and the little dowels that come off the back of the door panel you just pull that door forward and uh, slide it in and then slide it down and it locks right into place stand by okay that slid right on like it should It looks nice and it's flush all the way down. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to put the screws back in uh, down inside these holes here. Let me see. All right, the machine is done. That is the Cove uh, by Sub-Zero. Um, it was a pleasure to work on. The uh, recall rework wasn't bad. Don't be afraid to take these on. It's a, it's a um, Pretty cut and dry, basic. They give you everything they need. It's it's pretty plug and play. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you like my videos, this is a new channel. And um, I'm going to be posting all kinds of repair videos on here and things I come across. Um, and I, I hope you can hit the like, the thumbs up on there, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.